Hey everybody, Mark Peterson here. Today I want to go over the pack list that I use when I go to Pakistan. Pakistan is by far one of my favorite spots to travel international. Over the last couple years I spent over 50 days there, traveling from the southern part by Karachi all the way to the northern part right on the Chinese border. Let's dig in. Number one, you'll see on almost every pack list video that I do, iPad headphones. No idea how important these are for airplane travel, but also in Pakistan you spend a lot of time in the car and a lot of time um, in lodges and so forth at night. Not necessarily TV that you can understand. Always make sure to pack this. Makes time go by a lot easier. Backpack. Backpack depending on which hunt you go on, depending on what size you need. So if you're going up north, blue sheep hunting, Himalayan ibex, um, markhor hunting, you'll want a larger pack like this because you'll actually be going out and you'll spend some nights in tents and little huts. So you want a larger pack to be able to fit all your stuff in. So depending on where you're going in Pakistan and what you're going after is if you need to bring a sleeping pad and tent. So if you're going blue sheep hunting, Himalayan ibex, something where you're going to take off, not go back to the village or town every night, then you're going to want the sleeping pad and sleeping bag. Now, one thing that I recommend everybody bring no matter wherever they go is a sleeping bag uh, in a compression sack so it doesn't take up much space and so forth. But depending on where you're staying, sometimes you'd rather sleep in a sleeping bag than um, what's there. Especially on a Himalayan ibex hunt, blue sheep, markhor, 100% need this. On some of the other Urials around Islamabad, uh, down south, not so much. But again, something I always just recommend packing if you got room. All my trips, I recommend waterproof bags. There will be some point in your travel in Pakistan that your bag will hit the outside of a car while you're driving because there's not enough room on the inside. So waterproof, big key. Keeps out dust, don't have to worry about it, or if it starts raining, you'll be all set. Rain gear. Going international, I never recommend bringing packable rain gear because you never know what's going to happen. Day one, you snag it on a rock, it's all done for the trip type thing. So and when I go to Pakistan, I pack the heavy duty um, Cabela's Gore-Tex rain gear, make sure it gets me through. Gun-wise, um, whatever gun you're comfortable with, shots in Pakistan range usually from 100 yards all the way out to 500 yards, depending on what you're going after. Mountain animals such as Himalayan ibex, markhor, blue sheep, uh, depending on the time of year, those shots can be out a little bit farther. When traveling with a gun, International, always make sure to put a trigger lock on. It just makes airplane travel and clearing customs and so forth a lot easier if you have one of these in and make sure that you have the bolt out. You do want to make sure to bring a packable gun case. First thing you do whenever you get to one of the camps is you'll shed your hard case and you'll go straight into one of these. Let's dig into clothing wise. So I recommend layering on every trip that you go on. No different if it's international in Pakistan. Usually start with a t-shirt, then I go to a long sleeve t-shirt, and depending on what the weather's like, um, sometimes I'll just wear this sweatshirt. So if it's like 50, 60 degrees in the morning, that'll be basically what I wear, sometimes with a vest over top. Now let's say if you're hunting blue sheep, um, far northern part in February, it's gonna be cold. You're at 12,000 feet elevation, gonna be around 30, 35 degrees, heat of the day type thing. So you're going to about, want to be as warm as you can. Start the same way. Go t-shirt, long sleeve, then I'll throw the sweatshirt on, a vest over top of that. When I'm not moving, I'll have this insulated layer on, and then a windbreaker shell coat on the outside of that. Now, if I'm sitting and glassing in cold weather, I'm going to throw my Gore-Tex rain gear right over top of all this, because what that does is it cuts down all the wind that comes in. Also going to pack long johns. I wear wool long johns no matter wherever I go because if you start sweating, this stuff dries, especially on mountain hunts and stuff that you'll be moving, tops and bottoms. Um, pants wise, I found my favorite pant now is this Cabela's Stalker pant. Um, for whatever reason, it just fits me extremely well. So I'll have a couple pairs of this and on my bottoms, I'll have the long johns bottoms depending on what the temperature is. Hat as always. Um, glove wise. So depending on where you're going, say you're going after Send Ibex and Uriel down south. What do you need? You need lightweight gloves. If you're going Himalayan Ibex hunting up north, you're going to want thicker gloves for when you stop, but you're also going to want lighter gloves for when you're hiking because you're going to be working up a sweat, but you'll want gloves on because you'll be grabbing a lot of rocks as you climb. Always bring a neck gaiter. Bring two hats. I bring a warm one in case I stop. And then I bring a wool one in case the wind's really bad for when I'm hiking. I wear this because if I sweat in it, it's going to dry right away. And I also have two hats just in case it's cold when you're sleeping. you got one that's going to be dry so you can wear. I do bring a baklava. What this does, if you stop and you're up high, cut the wind out. Another good one. This is wool also, so 
moisture from your mouth and so forth, it will dry pretty quick. Socks. I recommend socks with liners um, just for my feet. That's, that's what works. If I'm going vertical on a mountain, for some reason, if I have liners in, I don't get blisters. I also go with the over-the-calf sock, especially on mountain hunts, because if you're going up, there's just a lot of sock movement. If it gets over the calf, it's going to lock in place. Good hunting belt. Um, this is a sweet one that Cabela's makes. It's a plastic one, it's tougher than nails, and it doesn't weigh anything. Dig into the fun stuff over here. Sunglasses, always make sure to have it, especially on mountain hunts because the sun off the snow gets really bad. Uh, shell holder. Um, I pack all, all this miscellaneous stuff in these Sea to Summit bags. It works out really well. I also started bringing a dark energy charger on my trips, just being that not always sure where the power is going to be, but a lot of people just use their phones to take pictures now. So one of these goes a long ways, also charges up the iPad. Got headlamp, flashlight. Knife, Leatherman. Always wear the Leatherman on my side. Never know when you need it in the field, but you don't have to dig in your backpack. Hearing protection, duct tape, super glue. Two things I always bring with me no matter wherever I go. You never know when you need duct tape. Super glue can stop a cut if you're in a bad situation. Do bring one of these Sea to Summit bags so as I get dirty clothes throughout the trip or like when I was on the blue sheep hunt. By the time we got done 10 days in the mountain, you just wanted to put those clothes in a bag and not have to worry about them until you got home. Put it right in this, didn't have to worry about it. One of the key things, not just for Pakistan, but any international travel is making sure that you have a power converter. So the one that I bring is basically universal. So I just pack this same one, doesn't matter if I'm going to Africa, Asia, all works. But this way you'll be able to charge everything up and not have to worry about what kind of cord you got. Optics wise, binos with bino case, bring a spotting scope. Never know what the guys are going to have in the field over there. And if you can fit it weight wise and if you can get it in your bag, always bring your own spotting scope. Just makes it a lot nicer. Phone scope, make sure you can take some pictures of what you see. Lens cloths, these are the wet ones. So as you go throughout the day, if you get dust and so forth, you can use those to clean off your glass. Um, trophy tags, if you're successful in the field, especially international, it always helps. So on these tags, it has my address and it also has the wildlife gallery information on here. So when you put one of these tags on, it stays with your animal all the way through transit. Anybody ever has a question about who's Ibex, who's whatever that is, this has your information and where it's getting shipped to. It makes it extremely nice. Camp shoes, a big one. Traditions in Pakistan are you don't wear shoes inside houses, so it's really nice to have sandals sitting right outside the door. So as you go in and out, extremely nice. Up north, if you're staying in a tent going after blue sheep, it's nice to have these as you're walking around camp, then you don't have to worry about putting your boots on every time. You do want to bring a towel with you no matter wherever you go. Even if you're in, in southern Pakistan, you're just never sure where you're going to stay. Towel doesn't take up much room. Um, it's nice to have it. Wipes. All my trips, I always bring wipes, body wipes, individual wipes. Again, if you're in certain areas that don't have showers, a lot of the Uriel areas in the Markor, no showers, wipes work just awesome. A safety that I always bring is a mountain house, um, especially some of the northern spots. The southern spots are really nice, the food's really good, but it's always safe just to throw a couple mountain house in the bag, just in case, worst case scenario. Water bottle, I do bring all my ready stuff. Again, the, the pre-workout really helps as I switch time zones, so that first day I always wake up a little droggy, take one of those pre-workouts, power through the day. Individual cosmetics. Everybody handles their own stuff, whatever kind of pills you want. The key ones in here, always recommend packing pain pills, be Tylenol, Advil, whatever you recommend. You're going to be sore as you start climbing and stuff, and especially from getting off a plane, it's nice to have those. Boots-wise, always make sure your boots are broken in. If you're hunting just in southern Pakistan, it's going to be warm. You don't need insulation. The other spots, if you're going to be around Islamabad or farther north, I'd recommend a boot with 400 to 800 grams insulation in it just to be safe. Gators are a key on those types of hunts. And the last thing, probably most important out of all of this, is to make sure that you have travel insurance. And I also recommend evacuation insurance for any international trip. Doesn't matter wherever you go, Pakistan, Africa. You never know what's going to happen. You never know when you're going to have a medical emergency. I've had the experience of being airlifted out of Alaska. Ripcord saved me there. I have this card in my back pocket no matter wherever I travel. Probably the most important thing that you can have on this. If you break your foot, whatever it is on top of the mountain, they will get you home. Um, WTA and myself personally recommend Ripcord. There are some other good carriers out there as well. Always make sure to have that one in your back pocket. Just a safety insurance and trust me, your wife will be happy as well.
And that's about it. So there's a lot to break down when you go to Pakistan. And it all depends if you're going in one area versus if you're going to see three different parts, how much you need to bring. If you guys have any questions on pack lists or anything for Pakistan or any international hunt, shoot me a message. Hopefully the guys at WTA can help you out. If you book the hunt through us, we'll give you exactly what you need to bring. Um, if you're looking for any other product reviews, product pack lists, or awesome content, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube page.